Hi, I'm Merrick Demetta. And uh, I I spin I spin round, baby, right round, like a Beyblade. And I'd like let it rip. <laughs> and I'd like to welcome y'all to Man Breakers with Texas Chainsaw Massacre Three Leatherface. <laughs> I would like to welcome y'all to the Leatherface Show. <laughs> So we got Leatherface, no, Tex- Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, which is a bad title from 1990. It's got a 5.1. Yeah. It's got a meta score of 30. How did this score less than Toxic Avenger 4? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, right, right, 8chan, 8chan. We f- <laughs> <laughs> they were like, no, 8chan's great. Score a that at Cal- six point six point five out of ten. <laughs> a California couple and a survivalist encounter Leatherface and his family. Okay, his, that's a premise. His new family. Now I remember um, in Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, they all got blown up. Yes. I wonder how this movie's going to deal with them all getting blown up. I also remember the last movie was ridiculous, over-the-top cartoon nonsense, and I loved every second of it. And, and as also, I said, you could have replaced Chophead with Daffy Duck and Leatherface with the Tasmanian Devil, and it would have worked just as well. I really hope they keep the cartoony tone for this. I like the cartoony tone. I don't think they, they, they really do have to, but regardless, I mean, like, Leatherface should be dead in the last one. Anyway, this is from the... Yeah, he got chainsawed in the stomach, if I remember. Fucked. He should have been fucked. <laughs> he fought, uh, I was going to say Danny Trejo. That would be awesome. Where's Machete meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre? That <laughs> meets Terminator. That, that I want to see. Yeah. Uh, okay, meets Terminator wouldn't even be, like, t- Leatherface would be like, <laughs> Texas uh, I guess Terminator, so, yeah. Terminator would be hasta la vista, baby, and then shoot him. And he's since he's just a guy, he has no defense against gun. <laughs> no, he has he has defense against gun. He can throw hammer. Yeah, you throw a hammer at the Terminator. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it does something. Maybe not a whole lot, but it'll do a little bit. I think I'm just saying Terminator though because I've been reading one comic book about Terminator. Hmm. I don't know. I've been I've been kind of anyway, hammered by that universe. Let's watch a film that Toby Hooper had nothing to do with. That's encouraging. Yeah, let's. Uh, let's oh watch joy! That. Oh goody, 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 gumdrops. Let's go. Some tales are told, then soon forgotten. But a legend is forever. Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Now, from the producers of A Nightmare on Elm Street, the real terror begins November 3rd. So, uh, Bone Patrol for stupid fuckface, eh? I'll show you motherfuckers! What? (laughs) The fucking... Alfredo says, Oh, yeah, Alfredo. The bodies. <laughs> this. <laughs> the bone patrol for a stupid fuckface, huh? We... I'll show you, motherfuckers. <laughs> we have very differing opinions. We're like diametrically <laughs> opposed on this one. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed this movie. This I movie didn't was enjoy <laughs> it. Decide, like, the, apparently, the way it's going to deal with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is pretending it didn't happen. Yeah, that's how they. That's totally how you deal with your fucking brilliant. Your 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 your, your fucking your your series. That's how you handle it. Bravo. 
Also, guys. this is yet another awful 90s slasher en- entrance. Just wait till we get to the 90s entrances for Nightmare and Friday yeah, and honestly, Halloween. It's not great, but I mean, it like the at least it like has some bearing on plot, I guess. Yeah, we we get the whole like this is a sequel to the first one. Yeah, it's like it goes like August eighteenth, nineteen seventy three. Recap: uh, uh, Girl and invalid brother get fucking killed. Hey, may may I just talk about that for a second? Yeah, go ahead. He wasn't an invalid; he was in a wheelchair. There's a difference. <laughs> yeah, but it, it describes him as invalid. He's not an invalid. He's just in a wheelchair. It's not the same thing. Invalid is like you're bedridden. You rather than call him retarded. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'd rather it be a sequel to the second movie and continue the cartooniness, but no, we gotta be serious. <laughs> Honestly, I'd rather they go and retard it in this case. I, I no, nah, I, I had quite enough of that in Citizen Toxie. You're, thank you very much. I want to stand up and clap every time they call him retarded. <laughs> Anyway, we start with um, <laughs> the big Citizen Kane clap. I for well, we we apparently Leatherface is a personality that one of the Sawyers exhibits when he puts yeah, on the mask. Apparently, because nobody cared who he was till he put on the mask. That's stupid, honestly. Like fucking uh, yeah, the jurors claim that Leatherface is just a split personality of Sawyer when he wears the skin mask. It's, it's like I, it's I, I, like I it activates under- like a trap under- card. <laughs> he, it's his persona. <laughs> no, he fucking he has the invoker. No, the mask is his invoker, and he puts it to his face, and he goes persona, and he blows his fucking head off, and he's dead. I, I've never really understood <laughs> this in 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 stuff, but oh, it's a hey, this person killed a lot of people. Oh, it's okay. They're not responsible. They can't help it. Yet that doesn't make it better, though. (laughs) That doesn't make it more safe if they can't stop killing people. (laughs) You're a serial killer when you put on this mask. Me no can help it. I'm serial killer mask now. Have serial killer mask and become serial killer. That what do? Can you argue that? No, because I have no idea what you said. <laughs> and have serial killer mask. Serial killer mask make me become serial killer. Anyone wear serial killer mask become serial killer. Wait, that what serial so killer mask does, do? Does that mean this Texas Chainsaw Massacre film is just Splatterhouse? No, it's just JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It's fucking everybody puts on the stone mask. Everybody gets a turn up being Dio. Wham oh. bam, thank you, ma'am. Cool. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's your obligatory JoJo reference for this Joy. video. Thank you all. Have a good night. <laughs> so we start with there's a little gr- there's a woman who escapes Leatherface. Yes. Well, not little girl, but girl. A young girl. The little girl's evil, and I really can't stand her. And putting children in this movie was a <laughs> massive mistake. Honestly, she's the one like family member. I was like, they're going way too far with this one. Like this is just fucking dumb my my reaction was oh good a child actor if i thought and i didn't think this movie could get more irritating she does kill the worst character in the film though and i commend her for that she kills herself (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) i met ryan (laughs) They have names. Uh, I guess they do. Ryan Ryan's the worst fucking character in this whole film. It's uh, it's fucking Michelle's guy friend. Anyway, people are driving in a car. I think. Yeah, Michelle and Ryan. Michelle and Ryan. They're driving in their car along, and they're listening the... to the fact that the entire ca- canyon has collapsed and revealed an entire pile of dead. But Just first, they're listening grave. to some pretty good rock. Yeah, like not really, not not like the mask, not great, but like no, the music's okay. I mean, it's not great. It's like so so Motley Crue. 
Yeah, sounds... it's like uh, it's like basically like if you listen to uh, the last soundtrack for Toxic Avenger Four, mm. uh, basically like sped up. It's 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 pretty decent. It's not the best, but it's okay. But uh, yeah, we we do see Leatherface making his mask, which gave me very uh, Nightmare on Elm Street vibes with him making the making the claw hand at the beginning. And which makes sense because this is also New Line. Because by this point, New Line owned Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I think Candyman as well. Uh, All owned yeah, by I New think Line. Candyman also. Which uh, also is getting a remake now. Candyman uh, a remake. That, that, I haven't seen Candyman in a long, long time. Yeah, well, they're making the new movie now because, you know, black people want the want more movies to watch, so therefore they're going to bring back any black characters they can think of. Nothing against that, really. It's just I mean, that's what I, they're doing right now. It's on the kick, you know? I think, actually, it's interesting because the Candyman is probably the only of the... Cla- I mean, he's not really a classic slasher. But one of the only of, like, that type of horror villain... Who's actually not evil? I mean, he's he's evil, but he actually has like depth to him and a reason for what he's doing. He's a vengeful spirit, right? I mean, yeah, it's... but I mean, it's also it's also because like just like you know, black people are like, oh hey, here's a black character, let's bring that back now because like it also kind of comes off as that. I don't see it. It's like, I mean, like, come on, like, they had the whole thing with, like, Black Panther and everything. Like, that was super Yeah, recent. but that's because it's the Marvel movie. Like, what, they're not gonna... He is one of the bigger characters. Yeah, exactly. Recently. But, I mean, they could have made, like, Luke Cage into a full-on film, but instead they just gave him the Netflix thing. Yeah, they... I'm still... I'm still a little burned them not casting Mr. T as Luke Cage. As Luke Cage. Be good. It would be Mr. Really good. Mr. T as Nicolas Cage. Hold on. <laughs> No, that was, that was Photoshop. Perfect. Do it. No, you got it. There you go. And then, and then, uh, like that, Nicolas Cage as Ghost Rider. No, never Nicolas Cage near Ghost Rider, please. No, but it'd be Mister T as a Ghost Rider, and he'd have like the flaming mohawk and everything. It'd be fucking the coolest. Why? In that case, why not just cast him as Vengeance? No, <laughs> who has a mohawk on his skull because of the nineties. But no, though, because he's he's Nick Cage. But Nick Cage was bad as Ghost Rider. Nobody has to be Ghost Rider, though. Okay, fine. We'll do this on one condition. <laughs> what? We're going to sew up Deadpool's mouth again and put his swords in his arms. <laughs> Fuck you. It's no that The Ghost Rider movie is the same thing. Ghost Rider movie is just as bad as that version of Deadpool. Okay, then. You know what? In that case, then, we have to have some other actor to play d- that version of Deadpool, then. Not Ryan Reynolds. Okay, yes, how about... Some other actor. How about... This is for you, Nelson. Topher Grace is uh, is Venom forever. Hmm. I don't think he would agree with that. Let's have okay. Let's have this. Let's have Topher Grace playing Deadpool as that shitty version of Deadpool, and then have him killed off. Actually, I think Topher Grace would do an okay Ghost Rider. Yeah, it'd be all right. Anyway, Texas Chainsaw Massacre three, very boring yes. film. They're right. They're driving down the road. And they ride down the road. Their car, they stop for gas because it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. And it's um, this movie decides to immediately spoil its twist. Because okay. we see Viggo yeah. Mortensen, uh, Aragorn, son of Arathorn, if by life or death I can save you, I will, you have my sword. But it's not this day, this day we fight, ride Men of the West, is walking down the desert. And the um, and the gunslinger followed, and he gets to and the he gas pulls station. Into the gas station, he sees the gas station attendant and is like, "Hey, man!" And they're like, "Hey, hey!" And then they're chill, and then he goes and hides in the gas station, and then the gas no, station. he calls him. He calls him something very specific that just blows the whole cover out of the yeah, water. Bro, he calls him master. No, he calls him massa. Calls him massa. Massa. Huh. He goes massa. Like tilts his hat. It's like, it's like, okay, yeah, you're acknowledging that this guy is, like, fucking, like, you know, the, the head of the domain, but also you're, you're claiming that, you know, you're cool with him. He's a weird perv guy who pervs on, uh, Michelle. Very pervy. 
Very pervy. And then gets angry at her. When Alfredo. She gets an- she ge- no, he's not Alfredo. No, his name's Alfredo. No, he's not. Alfredo's someone else. Uh, His coveralls say Alfredo, dude. This is... But he doesn't look like the Alfredo. But it's Alfredo. It can't... All right, I guess. I don't care. This movie doesn't matter to me enough to argue. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. I'm checking it out right now, man. Because there, Alf- there is an Alfredo. I yeah. know there's an Alfredo. He's the guy, the complaining guy who on, almost always plays doctors or secret agents. Mm-hmm. Like, really, I looked it up. He's only, like, FBI and CIA agents or doctors, except for this role. No, nah, bro, that's him. Oh, all right. Why did, does he ha- lose his beard and weird eye between scenes? He always has it from, from the beginning. He no, has a weird eye thing. No, he has the weird eye and the beard and the hair in the beginning, but then when we find him in the swamp, he's bald. Uh, I don't, no, he's wearing a bandana in that scene. Oh, okay. When he's in the swamp, he's wearing a bandana and army coveralls. Uh, all right. Yeah. So he pervs on, on Michelle, and then V goes like, hey, man, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Because it's a trick. And then they... Yeah, it's a trap. And she wants to give him a ride, te- him who's called Tex, this, and he's dressed like a cowboy, wants to give him a ride. Aragorn. In Aragorn more ways. Tex. Aragorn, they, they want, because she wants Aragorn. <laughs> yes. But, and Ryan's like, no, just, just leave him out, out here. We don't want him in our car. And then they end up get breaking, they get hit by a truck. No. Do they? Uh, not right away, no. It's like, uh, basically, uh, they leave the gas station after, uh, like, uh, Tex supposedly gets shot yeah, by Alfredo. Because Alfredo busted. has a gun and is angry because he yeah, is exactly. in it, cause he's an angry internet incel. <laughs> yeah, and also, also he's complaining about being on the bone patrol and, and getting back at the motherfucks. <laughs> because he's stupid fuckface. <laughs> this reminds me a lot of Curse too. Surprise with a lot of the stuff that happens in it. It kind of is, yeah. <laughs> um, it's reminded me of a lot of other stupid shit, like like a couple of parts of Hills Have Eyes and Tusk. But I mean, I'm not going to talk about those movies because they're kind of better than this. But what about the crossover Hills Have Tusks? <laughs> the Hills Have Tusks. What? Yeah, yeah, you That's heard not me. A thing. Is yeah. that a thing? How do you know? <laughs> because I know. Well, now you're going to tell me that my favorite uh, character, fictional character ship, um, Randall Flagg from The Stand and Agatha Harkness from uh, WandaVision, my, fav- my favorite ship, those two, which I call Flagatha, isn't a thing either. Uh, it could be to you. But I mean, you're you're probably gonna be just like fucking uh, frankly, Darkness dementia raven weighing it. Frankly, I am. I like the name Flagatha more than the actual ship. No, it makes sense. No, it's it's flagship. It's good. So what's become of my ship? Anyway, they 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 run into a into a truck dri- driven by a military cosplayer. He's not a military cosplayer. He's a, He's a survivalist. Yes, a survivalist. The militiamen. They're military cosplayers. That's what we call them. No, not really. Kind of outdoorsy. He's got a gun, sure, but I mean, he's like yeah, a weekend he's, warrior type, you know. He's weekend also warrior. he's also pro uh, one of the type of people. Probably not Ken Forey. Uh, by the way, this is Ken Forey from Dawn of the Dead and yeah. Night Riders. But it's the same kind. Of, it's it's these kind of people who did the unconstitutional domestic terrorist action um, post-election in the U.S. They didn't have the right to. I'm not saying that they did, but I mean... He's no, I'm not saying they... Just... But it's that kind... It's, the, it's these uh, preppers, um, militiamen guys who did that. Or were involved no, but they're in worse that. people. Those are worse people, though. True. Is what I'm getting at. Uh, like, they're, they're fucking disingenuous assholes for the most part. And honestly, they fucking, they'll, they'll drop a, they'll drop a side of a war at the drop of a hat, basically. So like they, they have a, dishonest. they have a traffic collision. Mm-hmm. And then Tech shows up. Completely by accident, though. It's just, he's driving down the, the road one way and like they're coming down the other and caught him off guard, you know. Mm. They flipped the car. 
Things so we, happen. Yeah, things happen and they end up in the Sawyer house. Uh, yeah, but I mean, they get chased for a little while. Oh, first. no. First off, they their car, before they meet Ken Forey, their car gets attacked by Leatherface. Yeah, that's true, huh? Yeah, they get the whole trunk fucking ripped out. And and he's like, oh, there's a guy chasing us with a chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, right. And then Also, we hear the squeaky knee. Yeah. Because if you remember, Leatherface chainsawed himself in the leg in the first movie. Yeah, that he did. So this movie and the far superior Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 also had him have a leg brace. Like yeah, Mad Max. Well, like, yeah, I like the I like the squeaky knee trope for him though. It's mm. it's really cool. Like that you get to hear him a little bit. And, I like, mean, the, the it makes it builds. even goofier that no one can seem to outrun this slow, chunky guy with a chainsaw and a busted leg. No, they can. <laughs> People outrun him pretty often in this film. Mm. It's just like every now and again he'll get the jump on you, you know, like he does. Uh, he does to that one girl who gives the the lighter to uh, to uh, to Ben. Yeah, Ken Forey. Yeah, exactly. Like she, she fucking, she like immediately starts to follow the sound when she hears the squeaky knee, and it just leads her to the chainsaw swinging on a tree, mm. in which she gets fucking like battered and stabbed. So. Yeah, uh, when Ken, when Ken, when Ben does see the uh, the chainsaw marks in the car, he's like, "All right, I believe you, because I'm not stupid." <laughs> Doesn't he go like, like, like that? Uh, that's that's some that's some large saw, <laughs> like something like that. So the uh, the, the they get taken like by Tex. Uh, Ken escapes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan's unconscious, but um, Michelle gets abducted and taken to the new Sawyer house. Yeah, and Ryan, Ryan got, like, trapped on his leg, basically, and wasn't able to move. Yeah, because they got bear traps around, which is one of the ways you can compensate for a really, really slow, non-threatening slasher, is have yeah, bear exactly. traps around. There are traps all over the fucking forest, though. Like, Unfortunately, it still hasn't... Makes total sense. It still hasn't dealt with my main problem with the, with the Sawyers and Leatherface as horror, as horror villains. Mm-hmm. Oh. They're not scary at all. Yeah. Like, I, I, I mean... keep... Whenever they do any... Whenever there's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, I just have in my brain uh, Rex from Toy Story with... Right. I keep going for fear... I'm going for fearsome, but I keep coming off as annoying. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're just you're, the Sawyers are just annoying to me. I don't find them scary. Okay, I, I mean, think of if, them as annoying. If I was in a situation where a big guy was running at me with a chainsaw, yes, I'd probably be afraid of that. But I mean, intimidated? No, intimidated for sure. But like, scared? Mm. Like Jason's intimidating. Freddy's intimidating. Michael Myers is intimidating. Leatherface is not. He is. Uh, not to me. Maybe you're just. You're, again, made of... you're not. You're not thinking in like. I don't know. I feel like if I was, if I was, say, a helpless woman out in the woods, you know, and well, a fucking crazy. All of these coming would... at me with a chainsaw, I'd be fucking scared. Yeah, but as a movie villain, he's not. He's nothing. He's like Yellow Jacket, or from Ant Man, or like Malachite from. Thor 2. Yes, We've that was seen worse. Yes, guys, that was the villain's name in Thor 2. It was Malachite. I'm sure you forgot that there was a Thor 2. <laughs> I haven't even seen it yet, so. Really? Oh uh, yeah, I haven't watched it yet, dude. It... I saw the first one, but not the second one or third. Dude, you got to watch Ragnarok. It's the best. <laughs> I'll watch it eventually after I watch 2. <laughs> Because I'm stupid like that. Geo, I don't know how to tell you this, but you've watched to- to- Toxic Avenger 4, Citizen Toxie, but not Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I've also seen Citizen Kane, and I mean, how many people out there have seen fucking Thor 2 as opposed to that? Probably shit tons. Yeah. Anyway, um, he's taken to the Sawyer house, and we so have... touche. We have Mama Sawyer. Oh, she, first she meets a little girl who's really annoying and has a who has no name but a doll called like Sally, who's made of yeah. dead people. 
And honestly, she's, yeah, she's kind of the worst one. And, and... I mean, it's not her fault. It's just she's a child actor. It's not just that. It, it, that's a big that, part of it. It's the fact that, like, is she is she actually related to these Sawyers? Or is I, she just a little girl who went fucking nuts and is helping them now? I think she's Leatherface's daughter. That's implied. Really? Well, because they say Junior always makes the best babies. Hmm. Yeah. But, like, you would think that she'd be a little more... I don't know. I'm going to sound a little bit fucking insensitive here, but uh, special. Isn't she? (laughs) Kind (laughs) of. But not enough. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe the genes of the other other person overpowered it. Hey, maybe it's a a main character from the last one. No, the last, last one didn't happen. It didn't happen. It's true, right? No, they retconned it entirely. Well, maybe it's just been some time after that. Who knows? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Little girl, bad actor, moving on. <laughs> scary the little girl. Scaring the little girl? No, just scary. The little girl is scary. So yeah. scary the little girl. And I, I don't get creepy kids in movies. I don't understand it. It's like, does this kid have magical powers? No, it's just a creepy kid. All right. Yeah. Punt. I... I t- I don't understand. In this case, though, it's like because she, like, Michelle was expecting the little girl to be normal, mm-hmm. and she turned out to not. Yeah, be but she should have learned. She should have learned her lesson from Viggo Mortensen in this one, shouldn't she? So, like, this is all her fault at this point. Honestly, lots of people could have learned lots of lessons from this in very short amounts of time, and the movie would have gone by better because of so such lessons like if it had been more like the second one so the story uh, right, like such as ryan going pull over i need to fix the lug nuts and then her going no i'm not stopping the car and him going but i need to fix them and then she goes okay fine i'll stop the car before the car flips you know mm. it's like no just fucking drive and don't argue you have a fucking serial killer on your hands. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm the son of a fucking mechanic, okay? And I'm telling you, don't check the fucking lug nuts. Keep fucking driving. Well, I mean, you would say that. You, it, It'll cost more to fix it. The lug nuts are busted, right? No, that's not the fucking case. <laughs> my, my case for this is literally drive the fucking car until you can't drive the fucking car anymore. Then deal with that problem. Uh, may I give my idea? <laughs> well, what the, the 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 serial killer is chasing you on foot? Turn yeah. the back the car up into the serial killer. No, but that doesn't work for like Jason. So I mean, yeah, but Jason's magical. Work. Jason is magical. Leatherface is not magic. Okay, <laughs> consider consider it as like Jason from movie one. Okay, he's not magical just yet. Jason is just a kid in the lake in movie one. Exactly, he was the ki- he was the kid in movie in movie one, and you you run him over with the car. But I mean, he still got retard strength. He wasn't. It was Pamela in movie one. Yeah, exactly. But he still got freaking you know retard strength. He'll no, still he doesn't. Be able to, like withstand a car running over him for the most part. I mean, this is Leatherface. Leatherface is huge. Yeah, and I mean, he took a freaking he took like six hits with a rock at the end of this film, okay? Mm. And he still fucking walked away. So he's <laughs> sh- they nail her hands to a chair. Yep. And the little girl collects the blood and pours it in gra- in the dead grandpa's mouth. How you like Texas? And we got Tex, we got Tinker who has the hook hand and loves technology. Oh yeah, we met him before, but uh, I actually wanted to talk a little bit about that scene. All right, that's go. what's been kind of biting my balls a little bit. All right, go ahead. I won't interrupt you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like uh, Tech shows up in the big truck, the big Leatherface truck, and he like he finds um he finds Ben, and Ben's like, yeah, I'm getting some goodies for my car. Give me give me a second. I'm gonna go get it. And like Tech's like, rocket, brother. So he goes into the the car and he fishes out his assault rifle. 
I don't yeah, because yeah, Ken, rifle. Ken, he's putting the assault rifle together. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a little, it's a, like a little M from like a little M4 or whatever. Mm. And he, like he folds out the stock, everything, and he like starts putting it bullets. Does in. He gets... bug me? That's um, a prepper. I get not carrying around an assembled assault rifle in your car. Yeah, but load the clip. <laughs> Yeah, at least have the clip loaded. Because it takes... He would have... This movie would have been over if he had the clip loaded. Yeah, and that's kind of my problem. That brings me to, like, the issue, really, I want to discuss the most in this, you know? Because it's like, he gets three shells into the fucking... The clip, you know? <laughs> then we see... We we see the uh, the close-up on the headlights, basically, and they're still shut on the, on the big truck. And then he gets four more rounds in there before the headlights fucking blast up and text, like... Oh, you gotta do what you gotta do, and like runs the the truck down basically full force. And at this point, basically, Ben was like fumbling with all the bullets all over the place, mm. and he he got like seven bullets into this clip basically. This Ken Forey, got. this Ken Forey would not survive the zombie apocalypse. He wouldn't. <laughs> he 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 fumbled all his bullets. You know, he's got seven rounds in there. That's maybe ten kills maximum, I would say. Ten to ten to fifteen kills probably. And, like and that's super... not even taking in the fact that assault rifles are like comedically inaccurate. That's it, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like we're talking like optimal shots, like mm. fourteen kills. Like if he set it if, if he sets the thing to like single. Exactly. And these are like perfect double double shot double like uh, double headshot kills, you know, like But pristine. no, he he of course once he gets it ready it becomes an action movie weapon exactly where it never runs out of bullets this brings me to the final point he schwartz and negrated it yeah exactly he had maybe a handful of more bullets which maybe kills him but maybe another 20 so kills but I mean, still, he fucking loads the thing and it just becomes fucking Ebony and Ivory from Devil May Cry. It's like, oh, I loaded my guns. How many bullets did you put in it? Uh, let me roll my dice. Hang on. Fuck. Okay, you put fuck rounds in your gun? Okay, it just shoots forever now. The fear in your eyes calls your bluff. <laughs> if if you come to my D&D campaign I and will you say, tell me this I have move- my gun loaded with fuck shells. This movie would have been much better if Ken Forey was doing fireworks. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> None chucking his shotgun around. Hell yes, <laughs> for sure. The assault rifle just blam, 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 whipping it all over out of his body. You so he ru- lucky, glorious. He runs off into the forest um, and meets up with the girl who gives him the lighter and then gets killed by Leatherface. That's literally her entire development right there, with the exception of, like, her saying, like, yeah, she's been on the run for, like, a week. Keep quiet. And, co- and she like, would eat a rat raw, basically. Yeah, and, like, oh, keep quiet. Do you want them to hear us? Yeah. Forgetting this whole time that the fact that he now has a gun yeah. <laughs> makes Leatherface no longer a threat because he can't, like, you can't Jason or Michael Myers can sneak up on you because they have just a blade. Or yeah, but you're forgetting that Michael with... Myers also took massive amounts of bullets in the last True. Also, those two are magic, so guns wouldn't matter. Also but retarded. Leatherface has a chainsaw. If he had the hammer, okay. He like If he had the power of Thor. But he has just the chainsaw, which is very... A chainsaw is not a stealth weapon. <laughs> It's really the opposite. <laughs> it's <laughs> like it's mainly it's like you a flame. Say it's not a stealth weapon. I'm like you don't say. It's, it's very very loud. <laughs> like Ash can get away with it because Ash is anti-stealth. awesome. And yeah, I know, but it's quite anti-stealth most of the time. Yeah. Also, Ash doesn't need to stealth. Like, because the Deadites know you're there if they see you or not because they just magic. No, <laughs> they're <laughs> demons. They're fucking zomboid demons from fucking the the ethereal from plane. beyond the stars. Exactly. They like, are. They are the colors out of space. 
Does it know where I am? Fuck you. Is that your good? Is that an answer for you? Does that answer your goddamn question? Fuck you. No. 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 We're back with uh, with, with Michelle in the house, and uh, they bring in Ryan Sold and him hang him up, hang him upside down. We meet Mama Sawyer, who. Is in a wheel home in the home. <laughs> she is in a wheelchair. She talks with one of those smoker boxes. Yeah, the what's a tricky uh tracheotomy uh yeah. freaking tracheal uh Apparently tracheal she speaker. cut she cut her genitals out. No, Leatherface cut her genitals no, out. No, she right? cut her own out and then she cut uh, grandpa's off. Yuck. Yeah, it's the the further we go, the more the Sawyer family, because they they try to do so much to make them original and not just like I got the the original Sawyer family loadout, which was Leatherface, uh, the gas station attendant, uh, Drayton, and um, and Nubbins. Uh-huh. They were the best because they were the most. I don't want to say normal, but the most comprehensible. It gets to a point. Where they just become a combination of the robot masters from from Mega Man and people from Twin Peaks. Honestly, like, both just like explain perfectly. It but gets I, to I the point it in, where I would I not be it su- as them being quirky. I would, but they're too quirky. I would not be surprised if yeah. eventually one of the Sawyers is just the Log Lady. <laughs> that would actually be perfect if the mom was just the fucking log lady but rambling like, on about cream corn <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> rambling on about cream corn how does cream corn fit into the universe i i don't know just get to the episode and saying just like oddly foreboding things like, like the obviously lighter, the lighter watching will end the sun's life blah 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 the owls are not what they seem, but obviously watching Twin mm-hmm. Peaks, I watch the the Log Lady stuff because it's part of the experience. You can't really oh, skip yeah, that, of course. But like watching it, I'm just I, I say shut up frequently, but it's not shut up to the actress. It's just Lince, shut up, Lince. You might think you're saying something, but you're not really not. But you don't understand though the log. Yeah, the but log I is speaking hey, to her. I do not introduce the log. <laughs> No, but the log knows all. Huh? The Ask log it. is like fucking yeah, exactly. Ask it a question; it might answer you. I thought so. Like I do not introduce. I do not introduce the log. Antediluvian god, the log is. I can't wait to watch the newer one so it can maybe explain the log. But I somehow know it won't explain the. It log. doesn't. No, <laughs> it doesn't, dude. The actress dies. The actress fucking dies, dude. Oh. The actress is fucking dead. And you know what? They had one last scene with her, and that was it. Like, watching Twin Peaks, I, I realized something. You get no answers. Like, with the resolution of the Laura Palmer thing? Yeah. Like, that it started the with... you're gonna get. Like, watching it, I think he started with this idea, and then because he's David Lynch, he got distracted by the other stuff. And then the producers were like, Dave, dude, we need to tell them, we need to give some kind of resolution to the Laura Palmer thing. And I was like, I don't know, a demon did it, let's move on. I want to get to Nadine getting super strength and becoming a high school student. So, uh, okay. <laughs> That's just quirky. That's just quirky, David Lynch, though. <laughs> And again, quirky, quirky kind of brings me to the other point about this film is like, it's entertaining for me. It's like, it's okay. just turned into entertainment value after a while, rather than impeding the fact that it wasn't scary. For me, it's like it just became a bonus. Like the, it's, it's a difference in t- like really big difference in taste. Cause for me, the last one was the entertaining one. It was entertaining. I'm not going to lie. It was a very entertaining film. But, like, this one in in terms of, like, you know, just, like, sheer, sheer, like, casting power from, like, the entire family in terms of quirkiness and everything steals the show completely from, at the very least, Ryan and probably Michelle, too. Ben is 
cool also, though, and, like, well, honestly, that's I would kind of consider Ben the main character. Well, it's because he's Ken like Forey, and he just makes you want to go watch Dawn of the Dead again, because Dawn of the Dead is a much better movie than this. Great actor, for sure, but, I mean, just the character himself, just the way he acts and everything, like, he's he's resourceful, he's he's strong, he's, like, so they're, very, very smart. They're harassing, uh, they're harassing Michelle as they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're getting they they kill Ryan. All right, cool. And they're getting ready to kill her. They kill Ryan. Not not only do they kill Ryan, the little girl kills Ryan with a fucking Home with Alone esque fucking <laughs> swing of the fucking sledgehammer from the ceiling. They <laughs> because yeah. Tech built it. They. And then, when they're gonna get ready, they, they also want to give her to Leatherface to make more Sawyers with. Yeah, so they give uh, they give him the, the mama lipstick, basically, and he puts the little... But right when he's face. about to, to chainsaw her head, I think, um, Ken Forey just shoots his machine gun into the house. Yeah, he goes, killing gun like, full of fuck bullets, we'll shoot. <laughs> killing half of them, and it's just, well... That's yeah, he, kills, he, kills he kills Mama. Yeah, he kills exactly who he needs to kill, really. And, like, the, the exact amount of people that needed to die for this movie to still go and for him to still have a challenge. He killed Mama. <laughs> he killed Grandpa. Well, Grandpa was already dead. It, it kind of, yeah. Like, he, he wasn't moving. It wasn't he like was in the corpse. last two. Yeah, he was... Yeah. It, it was just weird. Yeah, he and didn't... he didn't kill Tech, but he shot his fingers off. Yeah. Um, like he shot the fingers on his good hand. Oh, there's also before he does that, um, there's two scenes that need to be I, I want to talk about is where he uh, Tinker throws the the Molotov, not the Molotov, the Walkman. Those two very different things in the oven. Yeah, and then yeah. Leatherface makes him take it out with his real hand, not his hook hand. And yeah. then there's another scene where Leatherface is playing with a speak and spell and keeps insisting because Ted that got him that. And he keeps insisting that um, clown is that is clown food. is food. <laughs> but clown am food though. He keeps like spelling f o o d on <laughs> clown. It's like uh, the the things like the speaking spell is like what is clown? And he just goes f o o d over and over and over again, and becomes proceedingly more frustrated. I don't want to be mean, but it is kind. Of, I'm kind of legitimately impressed that Leatherface can spell food. <laughs> Right? <laughs> he doesn't seem like he knows. But he knows that much, which is cool. That's that's all he knows, dude. All he knows is is thing thing that breathes equal food. Thing have face? Face faced thing is food. Hmm. Like like you have face, Merrick. You are no Merrick. You am food. No, but me am no am food. You am food? If you not food, then who was phone? <laughs> if, if hard equal life preserver, <laughs> who you <laughs> are? <laughs> oh. Oh, so they they all flee the the Sawyer house. Yeah. Uh, the, the um the Michelle rips the nails out of in her hands out of the chair and runs off and is chased by Leatherface. Uh, also, uh, also the god, uh, the 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 great lord uh, Kevin McAllister is pleased by the by the kill of Ryan's. Well, uh, through the this home, is a horror movie. Home Alone. This is a horror movie. His name is Jigsaw. <laughs> Kevin McAllister would be fucking. Jigsaw no, Kevin McAllister is, is Jigsaw. <laughs> he grows up to be Jigsaw. This is this is canon now. Yes. This is this is this is your canonical. Little little foray into the. I'm the, not the, the only Sawyer one. Movies. I'm not the only one who thinks that. I can't wait till we actually watch these movies then, because my God, are we gonna have to, a breakdown of half of those things? Ah, uh, saw that was a really good movie. What about the other ones? The first one was really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just... that that is a conversation oh, no. I had though. It's just I saw the Saw movies and how were they? Eh, the first one was really good. What about the other one? The first one was really good. <laughs> like your mind, your mind just blocks out all the others. Yeah, like both Terminator films. <laughs> yeah, or anybody asking me about any other movie except for Ice Age 1 and 2. 
Wait, you don't know any movies except for Ice Age one and two? Uh, no, any of the uh, no any of the the movies. Oh, the that Ice Age movies. Made, yeah, exactly. Aside from Ice Age one and two, so because those are the only two good Ice Age movies. I mean, they're the only two Ice Age movies. I mean, it's DreamWorks, not Pixar. Whatever. Pixar made it, it would have been good. <laughs> it would have been. It would have been pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, so. Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Fun fact: the dodos do not actually go extinct in the Ice Age. All uh, all gods in the pantheon feared the mighty Lord Kevin McAllister. And I mean, the dodos went extinct in the eighteen in the eighteen hundreds because British sailors landed, saw them, and because on their island dodos had no predators, they were too stupid to <laughs> to do anything. So they just kind of let the British explorers. <laughs> Or bean them and eat them, <laughs> and there are no totos anymore. Ben has ten bullets in his assault rifle. <laughs> there are twenty birds in a tree. Ben fires off ten shots. How many birds are left in the tree? None. Because you know the gunshot. Why? Because yeah, because the gunshot make the make the birds fly away. No, the gun shot all of them because he has actually more than 10 bullets inside the gun. It just kept shooting all of the birds until all of them were dead. They had to go. <laughs> they had to go. So, all right. <laughs> so he gets in a fight with Tex and it's there's metal country playing. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly really good. Yeah, music the music it, it sounds like, like it. it sounds like a video game. Okay? Yeah, exactly. It's and one awesome. has one has a wrench, the other has a chain, and they're fighting. And then he kills Tex. I think with, not uh, with his gun though. No, like Tex. Tex takes a swing on the axe. I got this one. He's got he's got the swing with the axe. Yes, and he hits the gas the tank. Gas tank, which sprays Gasoline. the gas. Yeah, just covers him, and, and then he's he, laughing at at uh, yeah, he's laughing at Ben. He's like, "Ha ha, I'm gonna get you now!" And Ben's like, "Ha ha, you're the one that's fucked." And he just lights him on fire. You're fired. And he he fucking runs away screaming, and he's like, "Ha ha, son of a bitch!" And then and they realize that Tex the car is, is gonna blow up. Tex is off to become the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> the Texan oh, Avenger. Wow. Either that or he's gonna get like fucking Boromir in some stupid ass way later. But he's Aragorn. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. get Boromir in this franchise. Oh, did do you know you've seen uh, the two towers, right? Yeah, of course. You know that scene where Aragorn they, they find the the mound and they think Merry and Pippin are dead, so he kicks the helmet, the yeah, the Uruk-hai mm-hmm. helmet, and falls to his he knees. He broke screaming. his toe on that one. Yeah, so that was an yeah, actual scream of pain. Yeah, I heard about that one. <laughs> Yeah, he I love fucking it. legit screamed after he kicked the thing, and he fucking broke his toe. So that was an act. Just ah, I love little little like tidbits of information like that. Honestly, it's I like in Hateful Eight like when when Kurt Russell destroyed an irreplaceable antique because he thought it was prop. Yeah. Also, uh, also, what else? Uh, uh, Abigail uh, Abigail Whistler in uh, Blade Trinity. The actress was actually a really good like uh, uh, bow uh, like a uh, bowman. Like she's actually a really good like uh, archer, just, like marksman with a bow. Yeah, like she's a good archer. And uh, she hit a fucking camera dead ass, and it cost it like fucking like a, like three thousand dollars or something. It was like a three thousand dollar fucking camera. And she busted it with an arrow. Oh, that's only that's only the beginning shot. of of that film losing money. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like um, she shot a dead ass and then starts laughing because she realized she hit the fucking camera. Or there's the famous Apocalypse Now one where he's so high he actually punches the mirror and slices open his hand and doesn't know. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's just famous. Yeah. But that's just Charlie what? Sheen was fucking the uh, like a uh, Martin no, Sheen. Uh, Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen. Imagine Martin Sheen was a fucking legend for doing that movie for putting up with all the shit involved with that fucking. Like, oh, so was Francis Ford Coppola. He was doing that movie out of pocket. Oh, yeah. and almost mm-hmm. killed himself because Marlon Brando refused to learn his lines. Didn't they film it for like fucking three years? <laughs> yeah. They spent fucking three years, bro, in the fucking jungle filming Apocalypse Now. Yeah, they almost all lost their minds. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, holy shit, and they're like, bro. cool, I Lesser got Marlon. Lesser would have died. I got Marlon Brando wins. I don't want to l- do your movie, but I don't want to learn my lines. You you what? <laughs> yeah, no, Marlon. I don't you, you, learn my lines. You read the lines like I wrote them. No. <laughs> so they just fucking pointed the camera at him eventually and just let him talk. <laughs> and you know what? It worked. <laughs> yeah. Then they decided to make the movie longer for no reason. Yeah. Also, they had to give the cameraman a mo- uh, like a fucking mound of cocaine so he would actually like do his scenes properly. So, he- also, now, also, um, leather one thing. Yeah. One more thing. Fucking, uh, fucking Brando hated working with that guy with the camera. He hated working with that dude. I well, the actor fair was- enough, because everyone else hates. Br- oh, that was. Uh, Oh, bringing us back to what we were talking about, that was Dennis Hopper, who played the the police, the, the Texas Ranger in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, so let's get back to Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. There you go. He's also King Koopa. ba bomb, Monkey. Oh, perfect. Perfect. It goes full circle. I'm glad I brought that up then. <laughs> yes, thank you. But yeah, he fucking hated working with that dude. So he kills Tex, he goes off, um... There's a fight between uh, Michelle and Leatherface. Yeah, there you go. She actually loses her fucking mind right there, and she's just going, "Come get me, motherfucker!" Which I was like, honestly, yeah. If they would have like actually executed on her becoming a straight up like legit badass right there, never, like, never gonna top perfect. Stretch from Two though. Stretch from Two yeah, is but- still the best. Honestly, if she would have gone full on stretch, honestly, I would have appreciated. The oh, I would have definitely more. appreciated her doing more in this in most of this movie than screaming yeah. in a chair with duct tape over her mouth. Totally, for sure. Um, Ken Forey shows up and mm-hmm. he fights Leatherface in the water with the chainsaw in the water, bobbing back and forth. And who's oh, yeah, the... we forgot to mention forgot to mention that he got the new chainsaw, which, which... works in the water. A new and chainsaw. It says the saw is family. This and this chainsaw is actually really cool because of it appears in a video game I've let's played. Oh really? Yeah, it's um in Texas in Res- in Evil Dead Regeneration, you get an upgraded diamond bladed chainsaw in the last in like the second to last level. And it's this saw say, on Ash's hand. It says and the it's, saw is family. No, but the like it has the the oh, spike. It has the spiky dude. blade guard. It's the same color and all that. Okay, yeah, that's it, a cool. That's a cool yeah. send up. Nice. I mean, you can't. They can't really put the saw is family on a thing since no, New they, Line is a different company than and I'm sure they than Anchor Bay. Eh, it'd be a little little. It'd be a lot of money to pay for a one item. <laughs> Not really, because it's like you don't have like a copyright on mm. the engraving on a chainsaw. Like you can't, you can't copyright a, a design for a. For I mean, a it's thing not like that. It's the same brand of chainsaw, but it's not the same exact chainsaw. It's, it is smaller for one. Yeah. Okay. I can. Yeah. I can tell that much. But like, anyway, still, it's like, it's a fun little reference. Like they um, could have put that on, though. I'm sure they could have. Yeah, they could have. But I'm. It's you. You. Trust me, you don't spend enough time looking at the blade of the chainsaw in that game right. to know it's mainly going into deadite. Still cool. Still cool little send-up. So the chainsaw's bobbing back and forth, and it we think it chainsaws Ken Forey in the head. Mm-hmm. But then, and then she kills Leatherface. Yeah, she except like she doesn't. Rock and bop, bop, bop. Or does she? And then they're dri- then she's driving away. And then Ken... She's going, sorry, little guy, because she didn't put the uh, the armadillo out of its misery at yeah. the beginning of the movie. She yeah, there's an armadillo and it's not important. And they someone threw it a coyote. It kind of is. And then someone threw a coyote at, at their truck. <laughs> yeah, the but fucking she... coyote was the best. But she's driving away, and then she picks uh, Ken Forey is still alive, and then she pick she picks him up, and they drive off into the sunset. And then we see Leatherface's back and the chainsaw. And the end, and maybe a question mark. I couldn't care less. And they fight also Alfredo. Alfredo, uh, Alfredo, like uh, gets in the car with the yeah. uh, with the shotgun and everything, and then she shoots him with the shotgun. And he goes like, he goes like, stupid little bitch, like you don't know how to use that shotgun. And she's like, oh, are you sure? Because I'm willing to bet I do. And she just blasts him in the fucking head. 
And then that's Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Uh-huh. But she she says the one line, actually, that connects, like, the beginning to the end also again, and it goes, like... Uh, How do you because, like because Texas? Ryan said... Oh, there's no, Ryan... roadkill all over Texas. Yeah, exactly. Ryan says there's road... Uh, road... Texas is full of roadkill. And she quotes that afterwards, and uh, and Ben is like, uh, "Amen, like, damn right, damn straight, amen." And Got this by the ass. Drive off after. Yeah, honestly, I really, I do really, really like this movie. This movie, fair really enough. Great. To each their own. I really like X Men Origins Wolverine. I I <laughs> had a hell of a time watching this. This movie was fair enough. Beautiful. I'm probably never gonna watch it again, but eh. I might watch it one other time. It's possible, maybe even twice. But, like, honestly, for this first time watching it, I was very happy. I was very satisfied with uh, with my viewing experience of this. And, now, uh, might be even one of my favorite Texas Chainsaws. My favorite will always be, well, the first one is are, is just objectively the best. Mm-hmm. And it, like, kick-started the slasher genre. But my of favorite course. is the second one, just for how goofy it is, and the Oingo Boingo chase and all that fun stuff. <laughs> right, yeah. This one, eh, but... I think we'll agree, hopefully we'll agree on the fourth one, which we'll get to eventually, which, again, ignores the two and three and does its own thing. Mm-hmm. As you stated. I think we'll it ignores, that. I think it ignores one as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe. A- anyway, next time. Uh, wait, re- read it, because I'm going to rate this thing eight chainsaws that, that are the family and also eight bullets flying into the house out of Ben's gun. <laughs> out of time. I'm going to give it the three bullets he actually got into his clip. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> Turning it into a Devil May Cry weapon. Honestly, it should have just been one bullet that said fuck. <laughs> anyway. Like, literal fuck round. No, it should have it should have, it should have had, the, like, I think it's the number nine is the mission in Devil May Cry 3, which is introed by the number on the bullet. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It would or be good. jackpot. <laughs> yeah, just the bullet that says jackpot on it. There you go. You got it. A- anyway, next time we're going into the year twenty, the year twenty twenty four, a future you'll you'll probably live to see, an R rated, rather kinky tale of survival. Kinky. That's what that's what next week's movie is a rather an R rated rather kinky tale of survival. Okay, good God. So anyway, I, I've been I've been Merrick Tomato, and uh, I've been uh, I've been a weirdo fucking running around, and uh, you motherfuckers, uh, you've been on Bone Patrol for stupid fuckface. And we'll see you <laughs> next time. All you motherfuckers later. Ciao. <laughs> Bye.